Hey everybody and welcome to the Covenant Network broadcast. This is Bishop Randy Morgan coming to you today from New Covenant Church of Atlanta where the Spirit of God is being poured out upon all people. We're carrying on with Ephesians chapter 1. Um, we've been in Ephesians chapter 1 since the spring of this year and we're fully into fall now. So we're, we're taking Ephesians bit by bit, little bit by little bit. But Ephesians chapter 1 and we're in verse 18 today and we're just going to take a few minutes to look at verse 18. But before we get started, let's pray. Father, I pray for the eyes of the understanding of everybody watching that their eyes will be flooded with light, that they'll receive revelation knowledge and have an understanding of your plans and purposes for them today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're right in the middle of an apostolic prayer. Paul the Apostle is telling the Ephesians what he prays for them. Now, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Paul is writing to the, uh, to the Ephesians and telling them, what his apostolic prayer is for them. Now to explain what I mean by apostolic prayer, I don't just mean that Paul the Apostle prayed. I mean, I mean that there is an apostolic prayer. Apostolic in the Greek is um, apostolos, meaning sent or one that sends. And we know that when something's apostolic, we know that it releases something in us to be sent into the world to accomplish certain things for God. So this is an apostolic prayer. And let's read it together. Ephesians 1.18 says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. What a rich verse. Um, Brother Kenneth Hagin used to say all the time that he would pray this prayer uh, months and months and months. He prayed it for years, actually, uh, every single day, repeatedly. And so if we'll learn to do it, um, I'm sure it'll affect us as it did him. And the way he said it affected him was it released revelation, knowledge, wisdom, and insight into his spirit. So I've learned through the years to pray the Ephesians 1.18 prayer because Paul the Apostle and other ministers, Brother Hagin included, have used this as a formula to release a spirit of revelation in them. And so they pray, God, that the eyes of my heart will be enlightened in order that you that I may know the hope to which I'm called and the riches of the of your glorious inheritance in the saints that I have. So let's look at some of the Greek here and let's break this, this verse apart. First of all, Paul is praying that the eyes of our understanding or the eyes of our heart be flooded with light or enlightened. The Greek word for eyes is ophthalmos, ophthalmos. You may recognize the word ophthalmologist that we get from that. But ophthalmos means vision, vision. The Bible says without a vision, people perish. Without seeing the right things, it causes us to uh, perish or decompose in our life in different ways. We've got to have a good vision for our life. We've got to have God's vision for our life. What does God see? And, and we need to see what God sees for us in order to be effective in the earth. So he's praying that their vision have something. The vision of what? The vision of their heart. And the Greek word for heart is dianoia. Dianoia. D-I-A-N-O-I-A. And it comes from two Greek words, dia and nous. And nous means mind. Mind. Dia means through. So it's when it says your heart here, it's saying your mind through and through. What your mind is consumed with thoroughly. So the eyes of your understanding is basically saying the vision of what your mind is consumed with thoroughly over and over and over throughout a day. What does your mind see? What does your mind see? The vision of your mind. And he's praying that that be enlightened. And the Greek word for enlightened is photizo, P-H-O-T-I-Z-O. And we get the word photograph from that. And it means light. And, and so when you think about a light, when you think about a photograph, you think about the old films, the old uh, cameras, that when you would uh, click it, the shutter would open and light would flood in there and imprint on film the image that was in front of it. The ancient people that were writing this would have understood the concept, even though they didn't have cameras, 
they would have understood the concept of what flooded with light and how it affects your vision would be. I can give you an example that any one of us would understand. If you've ever been sitting in a completely dark room when the power goes out and it's lightning outside, there's a thunderstorm, light will suddenly flash through the room and your eyes will be flooded with the image of the room and it'll imprint on your mind. You can do an experiment with this if you've never had that experience where you've been sitting in a completely dark room and lightning flood your eyes and it imprint the room. Go sit in a completely dark room for several minutes and then flip the light switch on and then back off really quickly. And for a few seconds, you'll actually see an image of the room on your eyes and in your mind even though you're not directly looking at it, even though the room's completely dark, it imprinted the image of the room on your mind and in your eyes. There's, a, there's an effect of that being flooded with light that imprints what's in front of you on your eyes and in your mind. And you can still see chairs, and if you're in a bedroom, you can see the bed and stuff. Even though it's completely dark, you can still see it for a couple of seconds because the light floods your eyes and imprints it. So Paul's praying this. He's praying for a flash of the Holy Ghost, a flash of light, photizo, the flash of the glory of God that will imprint on the eyes of your mind something <laughs> thoroughly, through and through, so that it's what consumes your mind, the flash of the light of God that will thoroughly consume your eyes being flooded with light so that your mind will be consumed with something. Why? Why is he praying this? He's praying so that we'll know something. What he's praying for is that the, the hope of his calling will be imprinted on our mind, will be imprinted thoroughly on our mind. The hope of his calling, and the Greek words are elpis klesis, elpis klesis. And that's E-L-P-I-S-K-L-E-S-I-S. Elpis Klesis. He's praying that our minds, the eyes of our heart, will be flooded with a flash of light to imprint on our minds thoroughly the Elpis Klesis. What is that? Elpis is hope. Hope. Hope is in Greek is another word for vision or idea or concept. And Klesis is calling. So basically what he's saying is, I want the blueprint of God's purpose for your life flooded upon your mind. So when you're in the Word, the Word of God is our hope. And that, don't mean, that doesn't mean I hope what's in the Bible comes to pass. Hope in the biblical sense is a vision for the future. Is the idea that God's given us uh, a vision. So I, I put it like this. Paul said, um, now remains these three things, faith, hope, and love. Put it in perspective. Hope is the blueprint for a house. So when I was in construction, we had a blueprint and we'd roll it out and we would look at where the walls were going to be. We would look at where the plumbing was going to be, where the doors were going to be. Even before there was an actual house built on the lot, we had a blueprint. That was the hope of the house. In other words, that was the vision of what was going to happen. And so faith becomes the materials and love becomes the activity. So if we're looking at faith, hope, and love, hope is the blueprint. Faith is the materials that you build the house with, the hammer, the nails, the wood, the lumber, all of that. And then uh, love is the action of actually putting it together. So hope, he's praying that uh, we know the hope or the vision, the blueprint of his calling or his purpose for our lives. When you look at the word of God, and this is the Elpis Glesis, this is the hope of our calling. This is the blueprint of what God wants to do in us. When we look in the word of God, we see the life of Jesus and it imprints, it floods our understanding and it prints his image upon our hearts and our minds and the eyes of our understanding are flooded with light. He also wants us to know the riches of his glorious inheritance. Now, riches is the Greek word plutos. 
Plutos, and I'll write it on the next sheet of paper. P L O U T O S. Plutos. We get a couple of English words for that, but basically, even the English words mean riches. Riches. It doesn't necessarily mean ethereal riches or riches of, oh, I'm rich in relationships. No, it actually means riches, uh, wealth, prosperity, financial blessing. Even in the, the Strong's Concordance, you'll read uh, riches and material possessions. So praise God. Praise God for the Plutos of God. That if we know the hope of His calling, that we will also come to know the riches of of his glorious inheritance. Now, glorious inheritance is doxa clarinoma. Doxa, D-O-X-A, clarinoma, K-L-E-R-O-N-O-M-A. Doxa clarinoma. And doxa means glory, means the cloud of glory, it means the manifest presence of God. And clarinoma comes from clarinomos, which means to cast lots for a prime grazing spot. So if, if, I, were stand, if I and someone else uh, had sheep and we wanted to graze in fields, and I said, well, my sheep, I want the best part. And the person says, I want the best part too. We would cast die or dice, and, and we would look to see which one of us would get the right spot with the most stuff. <laughs> I know this is deep. Boy, this is rich. But... I, because of my relationship with God, get the clarinomia of the doxa, the glorious inheritance, the richer portion. I, I, I believe that I'm coming to know the Plutos doxa clarinomia, that I know the richer spots of the glory that manifests as riches and wealth in my life, both financially, emotionally, uh, and even on to that spiritually in every way possible. I prosper in every way because I live for the glory of God and I understand the hope of the calling that I have in God. Now, it says also in the saints. That's in relation to all the others who are set apart for God. So, let me review really quick. Paul is praying that the eyes of our understanding would be so flooded with light that it would imprint upon our minds the, uh, the hope of his calling, which is the blueprint of his purpose for our life, the riches of his glorious inheritance that I come to understand that in his glory is, is fullness, that, that my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory. That when I come to know the doxa of God, the glory of God, the presence of God, that I live for his glory, that in that there's plutos, there's riches to be found in that, and that I only come to know it when I'm in right relationship with the saints, in the saints. So I want you to say this confession with me. Boy, this is rich. I want you to say this. In the name of Jesus, the eyes of my understanding, the vision of my mind is being completely and thoroughly flooded with light. I am growing in my understanding of the awesomeness of his plans, the wealth of his glory, and my place in all of it with my sisters and brothers in the Lord. Well, hallelujah. Praise God. That was verse 18. I want you to, to begin to pray that every single day. God, I thank you that the eyes of my understanding, the eyes of my heart are being flooded with light, that I'll know your purpose for my life, that I'll have the blueprint, that as I get into the word, my eyes are being flooded with light in Jesus' name. The eyes of my understanding are being flooded with light, and it's producing the riches of your glorious inheritance in the saints. Begin to pray it. You'll see amazing fruit even in the coming days in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you. We'll get in uh, 119 really, really soon.